Chindori people, Attica Schaefer here, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My dear friends, it is so wonderful to see you again. I don't know when precisely this video is going to be uploaded, but I know it is going to be somewhere close to St. Patrick's Day, and if it is post-St. Patrick's Day, then I say to you, I hope that you are not incredibly hungover, and also that you have not pulled both of your butt cheek muscles in your lame attempt to river dance. And if it's before St. Patrick's Day, then I want to wish you a very happy St. Patrick's Day. Do not do any of the things that I just described. Anyways, cool people, welcome back. Today is another very special treat. We are going to be continuing on in the series of videos that Rachel and I are making together of my behind the scenes of the ABC and Warner Brothers television series, The Middle, which I played the youngest child uh, of the Heck family, Brick Heck, for nine years, over 215 episodes. We are continuing our journey through uh, season nine, which was the final season of the show, and I hope that you all greatly enjoy what I have to share with you all today. Today is going to be very special. If you tuned in to the uh, last episode of my Behind the Scenes series, uh, we were speaking all about publicity events and what that entails and uh, what we were doing specifically pertaining to and relating to our publicity of it being the final season of the show, season nine. And today, we are actually going to be taking a look at set life. Now, I know that on my Warner Brothers Ranch studio tour, you all were able to see quite a bit of the set, and uh, it, it was it was at the tour guidance of 15, 16 year old me. Was, is that true? I think so, yes. Uh, uh, or 17 year old me. It was 17 year old me who was doing that. Uh, but now we get to see what it was like with a few alterations, but even more importantly, additions that were omitted and that I, I was not able to capture. And that particular season of the show with me filming my little behind the scenes videos, now there are a plethora of more pictures uh, that I will be able to share with you all, which include the Heck House, which I, I promised you all in my Warner Brothers Ranch Studio Tour video, I would try to find and share with you all, and thankfully I, I am meeting you all with a, a measure of success today. Uh, before we get started, real quick, uh, go ahead and jump on down to the description bar underneath this video. There are a plethora of links down there that I think you will all enjoy. Links to my Cameo page, if you or, or your loved one want a happy St. Patrick's Day message, or any other message for that matter, birthday, anniversary, graduation, re repeating high school, you got bit by the dog, whatever it might be, I am more than happy to make a video for you or your loved one. Also, if you want to interact with me live in a more gaming and nerdy sense, even though I'm always nerdy, be sure to check out my, the link to my Twitch channel. And if you like spooky games and hilarious wit, please also check out the link to my editor's channel, Rachel, her YouTube channel, It's Ray of Sunshine. She's an absolute legend, and hilarity only ensues and follows her. So please check her out, give her lots of love. I know that for a while there, apparently her link was broken in the description box of most of my videos. Thanks, YouTube. But we have, I think, hence fixed that. If it is not fixed, please leave me a comment. Yeah, comment. I just said comment. Blech. Please leave me a comment in the... Uh, here, that tell me that I'm an idiot or that there's something wrong or YouTube is taking a dump on Rachel again. But on that note, please go ahead, grab whatever beverage or snack of your leisure uh, you would like to choose and cozy up with me. It is a uh, cloudy, overcast, damp day here in Southern California, and I have with me my cup of Mr. Folger's half-calf laden with stevia and mocha mix. So, cheers, everyone. Mmm. Oh, yes. Oh, please hook that up to my veins. Okay, on that note, let us continue on with our photo reel, and let's have some fun together as I get to narrate and orate to you all uh, adventures in TV show production. So, let's check it out. Okie dokie, cool people. So, our first photo here. Let's see what we got. Ah, yes. One of the one of the symbols that makes you feel important in life, having your name on a parking space. This was really cool. Uh, I was given a parking space when we got picked up after we did the pilot of the of the uh, of the show, the second one. And uh, this here is a good start. This this little what do you call it? Parking. It's not a pylon. Curb bump thing. 
a lot of good use, a lot of wear and tear, and there is my name in evidence to say that this is my space, and that is so cool. Um, again, having my name on my trailer and having my name on my chair and having my name on my parking space, those were the things that are like bequeathed to you when you were an actor on a TV show on a studio lot, and uh, to be able to have my name on that was really cool. Um, it, it definitely felt very special to me, and it's like, oh, this is mine. It's my own. How amazing is that? But it is. It's a little thing, I know, and I don't mean this with any sense of arrogance. It's just this was something that was declared to be mine. And and again, in this set, on this set, and in the trailers and in the sound stages, which were my home away from home for many years, this was a little relic of my history. And uh, given that Warner Brothers did tear down the Warner Brothers Ranch where we filmed the show, um, this is something that will never be seen again. You know, no one is ever going to be part parking in this parking space again uh, that was mine for a brief, you know, for a period of time in TV history. And so I wanted to share that with all of you guys. Uh, every one of us of the main cast had our own parking spaces. I actually parked next to Neil every day. Neil was to my left and then the soundstage door was to my right. So that was my little space every day. And then this next picture here is again the things that are named and like here this is yours. Uh, this is the entrance actually to to my dressing room trailer um, and it says the production in the middle and then my character's name of Brick. Some productions will have the actor's names on different things. Other productions will do just the character names. Uh, for our production we just had the character names and so this was this was my trailer and uh, and again as as we evolved in in the history of the show and the timing of the show there are different types of trailers that you can have. There are I think they call them a wall banger which is literally like five different dressing rooms sardine together in one trailer and you get like three square foot of space and then you have a triple wide triple wide or is it a triple banger i forget what it's called if there's a transpo person watching this video please tell me exactly what the name was the industry term but what you would have a three piece i'll just call it a three piece here's a three piece meal with curly fries where it would be three trailers lined up next to each other then you would have uh, two two trailers that were in one trailer, two two rooms in one trailer, and then you would have it where it was like just one. And for many years, Patty was the only member of our cast who had a single trailer. The rest of us had to share with each other. I had to share with Eden. But thankfully, I think it was like from season seven on, we all got our own spaces, our own like here are our trailers with privacy and goodness. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, and when I say tra share trailers, I don't mean it's one room that we share. I mean, there are two rooms that share a wall. So, I mean, it's like having a neighbor in an apartment building. You can hear everything that they're doing, like when they're singing really loud in their shower, thinking that they sound good. Uh, but they don't. That was my life next to Eaton Chair. Anyway, moving on from that. Uh, let's see what this next picture is. I'm going co totally off the cuff here. Ah, okay, so this is base camp. And, uh, this is... I forget what Jeff called this, but this is Jeff. He's our base camp PA, and he was with us, I think, pretty much from the beginning. Uh, from episode two on, Jeff was with us, and he ran base camp. Base camp is where all of the actors and the director and the ADs, the director's trailer, but the assistant directors as well, they will have their offices and their trailers so everybody can communicate with each other. And then when the set was ready, so this is where the first AD and the other crew were lighting a shot, lighting and, and moving cameras and such, and sending up a shot and everything, they could radio our, our base camp PA, and then he would go around knocking on all of our trailers and say, hey, they're ready for you, go ahead into stage 31 or whatever it might be. And uh, so that was Jeff's job for years. He would also be our coffee go-getterer and on occasion food go-getterer as well. So very important and official titles here. Uh, you guys are getting the inside scoop of what it's like. But he decked it out all nice and he would always decorate for certain holidays, but also mostly like sports related things. So baseball season, football season, season, which, which would happen during the time of the show, which I really don't know the details of because I could care less about sports with balls. And 
Um, anyway, so this was a, this was a, his little his little domain. He had his little astro turf and his nice fence, which has been run into a couple times with the production golf cart. And uh, this was his his little home away from home and abode for the entirety of the show. So that's very cool. Again, looking at the base camp, he was right next to Charlie's trailer, I believe, and then just behind him was Neil's trailer. Or yeah, I believe so. Anyway, next up here we have the WB sign. This is the old school original Warner Brothers sign that they had for the ranch. Um, and this is over here in that area that I showed you all in my Warner Brothers Ranch studio tour, where when they would tear down sets from different production buildings or sound stages, but they wanted to keep them, they would literally line up all the walls together and sandwich them like this, number off the parts, almost like a connect a dot, and they would stack them and put them there but also they had ambient stuff there as well too like there's a whole section over here that's literally just gravestones and headstones and and stuff to make some make up the look of a graveyard and of course we use that in the episode where Frankie and Brick actually went to a graveyard for some reason I forget what it was might have been a Halloween episode but then there's a bunch of other sets here too so like Axel and Hutch, Hutch's apartment would be torn down and stacked up and stored there Spudsy Malone's uh for the mall stuff the heck basement you know, different things like that that we might use on occasion and might have to go back to, but they don't want to leave it up all the time because it doesn't have that much of a use. That's where they would store stuff here. And then a lot of transportation stuff would happen here too, and they actually even had a woodworking shop behind all of this uh, tin roof stuff that you're seeing here. And this is a, a direct turnaround. This is a view, if you were to turn about 90 degrees to the right from where that view was of the WB sign, this is what we get to look at. And so you get to see here on the right, you have stage 32 and then all of our parking spaces. The car closest to us would be the parking space for the director. So this was whoever was the director of this episode. I think that was Lee Shell at Chamel's car, I think, before she got herself a Tesla. Or this is, or this might be... Phil Trail's rental car. I forget. But yeah, so we that that's our parking spaces there. Um, and then you're looking down the, the trailer that is square in front of you, in line with the skyscraper building, which is actually the Disney building where I I, I recorded some of uh, Frank and Weenie and did my auditions for Frank and Weenie as well as some other Disney projects. Um, the, that trailer right there is the camera trailer. So camera department would store all of their lenses and film when we were using film, which by the way, fun Fun fact, we used actual film, not digital, actual film for the first eight seasons of the show. And for cutting costs in season nine, we switched to digital. But that's a very fun fact. We wanted that style and, well, and, and that was the desired look uh, for the show. So that's why they, they used film all that time. But that's the camera trailer. Over here to the left is the wardrobe trailer directly next to us. The Coyote trailer, which is just behind it, you can see it right on the other side of the uh, orange traffic cone. That's that's right next to the wardrobe trailer. That is the makeup trailer, the hair and makeup trailer. So we would go there to get dolled up every day and uh, ready for shooting after we would do rehearsal. And you can see there the golf carts in question, uh, which slam into things. And then that wooden building that's right there on the left with the, with the the A-frame roof. It almost looks like a like a mobile home kind of building. Um, that it actually became our table read building, which we had uh, uh, for about three years, I want to say, season seven to season nine. Um, and yeah, the Smith House, which was the the house that we normally did our table reads in, actually got rented out for mo capture uh, motion capture production for like video games or animation. And so we couldn't use that anymore for table reads. So what we end up doing is is uh, production actually built this building and we could go in there and do our table reads in there uh, which is a lot of fun and you just get to see this chunk of a set that no longer exists right a, a, a studio lot that doesn't exist so very awesome stuff I need to say too before we continue on and as I sip my coffee friends I have to tell you I have absolutely been adoring being able to make these videos for you all I, sincerely it is so cathartic for me and it is such a joy and a pleasure to be able to share all of these stories with you and I'm so beyond thrilled to know that you all have been enjoying them I love reading the comments in the uh, in in the comment sections of all these different videos please 
continue to share your stories. Tell me everything, you know, tell me what are your favorite episodes? What are some of the things here that I'm talking about that you never knew about before? Um, what are some things that just bring you joy about the show or about TV history, film history? Tell me, tell me everything. I love reading the comments and uh, I love that I get to share all of this with you. So just as a quick little intercession, intermission, uh, let me tell you, I am so thrilled to be doing these for you and I'm so thrilled that you all are watching them and enjoying them. Okay, in track day. All right, what's next? Uh huh. Another view of our our trailers. Uh, so that you you have the Coyote trailer on the far left. That's hair and makeup. Uh, the Coyote trailer just to the right of that is uh, Patty's trailer. Uh, my trailer is the one to the right behind the the ads, and it looks like that's the first ad, uh, the second ad. And then a couple of production assistants sitting in, in Jeff's little area right there. But the one directly behind it is mine. Uh, and then to the right of that is Eden's trailer. And then an additional uh, trailer over actually is Neil's trailer. I'm, I'm remembering now the order of the trailers. And I'm glad I took the pictures that I did so I can see. So Jeff was right next to Eden. And then Neil could look in on Eden. So those were the, uh, those, that's the order of the trailers. And there's Jeff coming out of the hair and makeup trailer. Probably less letting someone know, hey, we're it's it's it, we're ready for you. When you're done in here, come on in. Okay, so now we have another picture of stage 31, and this is very special. Um, this is the kind of like the resume of the sound stage, and uh, all of the different sound stages had these, and on it were all of the different TV and film projects that were filmed within those sound stages, and it took forever. But they did finally put our name up on the sound stages while we were still there. I think it was like season seven that they put us up. And it also gives the dates of when it was when it was running. So like here's here's a couple of examples here. Um in feature films, Batman Forever, uh 1941. That's just a couple of them. And you can pause the screen here and, and read them. But like a couple of really known ones that are in, for stage 31 in television, you have Growing Pains, you have uh, the Partridge family bunch of stuff so definitely check that out take a look at it but we had that on there we had one on stage 32 and as you can see here this sound stage which again I, I cannot stress enough the heartbreak of uh, a sound stage that was existing since 1942 since the Second World War this sound stage existed and is gone I, I believe is gone I think that I think they got rid of the sound stage just as well if it is gone that's heartbreaking if not, then that's a blessing. And then there's a close-up there of, hey, the middle. Apparently my Walmart order showed up. Okie dokie. So, continuing on, um, this is an amazing shot that my mom scored of a shot in the show. I have no clue what scene this is from. Uh, I have forgotten more about my own show's storylines than I care to admit. Uh, I get a lot of people there like, Hey, yeah, you remember that one episode where such and such happened to that character? And I'm like, no. But I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Anyway, not sure, not sure what this scene is, but it's a scene and an engaging one. And uh, so we have both. So we were, we were classified, and this is cool knowledge, in the industry and specifically in film and, and specifically TV. Um, you have two different types of live action shows. You have a single camera show, and then you have a multi-camera show. A multi-camera show is typically the show that is filmed in front of a live studio audience. So prime examples would be like Full House, the old one, um, when I was on See Dad Run on Nickelodeon and Shake It Up on Disney Channel, we filmed in front of a live studio audience on those projects. And so we, we how our filming would be for those scenes would be we would rehearse for three days and then shoot for two. Uh, the last day was in front of the live studio audience. Um, for the middle, we were a single camera show. However, that does not mean that only one camera was in use at a time. We could have multiple cameras going at a time. And here's a prime example of that here. It's just we're not in front of a live studio audience. And other examples of single camera shows, uh, The Walking Dead, Sweet Tooth on Netflix, you know, things like that. Um, but anyway, here you have both of the cameras. The camera on the left is A camera that was operated by John Joyce. And then the camera on the right is B camera that was operated by a gentleman named Brett. I forget his last name. That is terrible of me. I do apologize 
apologize, Brett, if you see this, but I, I, it doesn't change the fact that, you know, we had some good times together. Anyway, um, so this would be an over. This is an over my shoulder to whoever was my scene co-star, which again, I forget. I think it was Patty. I'm not sure. Um, and then actually in the back there is our director of photography, Blake Evans, and he's lining up the shot. But you can see here the lighting, the filters on the lighting, the camera, how it's set up. Um, all of the actors behind the camera have been omitted. And then also too, you have our food here. A question that I get asked frequently, is the food that you're eating in scenes real? The answer is yes. Most of the time when there are, you know, scenes or sequences where actors are eating, uh, it is real food. And actually we had some very awesome uh, props people, which food actually, pardon me, fell into the category of props. Uh, props would always be very cool. Hey, this is the kind of food you need to be eating for the scene. What specifically would you like? My go-to would always be French fries because you can eat it and make it look like you're eating more than you are. Uh, but then when you need to speak in a scene, you're not stuffing your face and you don't get sick from overeating. So that's a real, that's a real thing. Sometimes you could have a spit cup if you're like eating something disgusting or nasty or you need to eat a lot of something. And then it's like, you know, you can, you can purge and not have to, not have to swallow all the garbage. <laughs> shush. Anyway, Michael Scott shush. So anyway, moving on from that. And what we would drink too, and for whatever reason I requested orange juice. Not sure why, but here's a great, that was a great shot, right? And then here's a shot, and this was me, uh, as, as, as I mentioned, there is one episode where, and I've said this in interviews before, there is one episode where there was a scene that was filmed that is probably one of the greatest scenes of all time in the show. And it was Brick trapped in this, this jail with the principal. And it was this beautiful scene that I literally had worked on for a week straight with myself. And, and m the director and I really took our time in trying to make it an impeccable scene. And it was a scene that I know that all of you would have absolutely loved. And really the premise of the scene was Brick in a very real and raw way was able to explain to the principal, look, I know that I'm different and I march to the beat of my own drum but whatever, I'm okay with that. I don't have to be popular. I want to be me. And, and again, that is a very, that is a very, very, very pared down version of what that scene was and the rich dialogue that was in it. And uh, Eileen Heisler in her sage and infinite knowledge cut the scene from the show and it just jumped to when uh, Sue comes and gets Brick out of the jail. And it did such a disservice to the show. Uh, I am so disappointed and I wish that there was some way that I could find a copy of that scene just to have. And, and for that matter, be able to share it with you all. So that way you can see what I mean. It, it wasn't a, oh, look at me as Atticus the actor thing. It was a, look at this amazing message that this character who is beloved for this reason is able to proclaim and speak on. Um, so huge disappointment. I'm getting off of my soapbox now, but yes, here's, here's me in that scene. Oh, this is a good one. Okay, so this is an exterior shot. Um, I forget what it was. It was fairly early in the season, um, but you can see way back there in the right, the green of the Hex station wagon. Uh, but this is a crane that actually you can mount a camera to. It, this was an amazing implement and apparatus that we used frequently to achieve those beautiful roaming shots where like it'll start tight on the family and then pull back to see whatever. Or you see the ambient scene of something and then you're able to punch in down on something. Or we would even mount lighting equipment to cranes like these and forklifts. But it was so funny. There was a, there was an episode back in like season three where the writers actually made fun of this because this crane costs production 19 grand a day. And they actually made a joke of that in one of the scripts. They said, as and as the shot pulls back on our $19,000 a day super techno crane, we fade to black end of episode. That was how it was written. Uh, and it was so funny. So I love that my mom was able to score a shot of, of this crane. It is such an awesome, interesting apparatus. And as you can see here, it's on a dolly track. So that way the crane not only can pull up, but it can pull back as well. And you're achieving a different shot that way and, and really it's amazing the artistry that you can unveil 
right with 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 how technology works these days it's so cool it's so cool and i say these days this was what eight years ago now six let me not age myself too much and then here is a front view of said crane um in this area if you were to keep going down this street you would end up running into the mr ellard's store uh but they decked out this side of the road to make it look like it was a highway a two-lane highway or, a, or a, a small amount of lane highway where there was traffic and then there's some transportation people over here on the left a camera guy and some background actors on the right so that's very cool and then here's the crane in action showing you the length and the the you know really what it has the ability of what it has and its its capabilities i should say and then there's a green screen and some shade area um and other like grip and electric apparatuses uh, behind us over here on the left underneath the tree Okay, so here is that shot I was telling you guys. I think I mentioned this in the Christmas episode where um, in, in stage 31 here, we're inside the sound stage where the Heck House interior was. So this is pretty much the stage where we lived most of the time uh, as we filmed the show. And how they would be, how the grips and the electrics would be able to get up into the rafters of the sound stage for rigging is literally this staircase, this old rickety, very high up staircase. Um, it would always be so hilarious because there were i mentioned this in my christmas episode where uh, the, the, for whatever reason the grips and the electricians this year wanted to hoist as much as they can up in the rafters and like just rig it up um and so there was a lot of trips going up and down there but some i i always wanted to go up in the rafters and i never once did i think that's one of the few regrets that i have yet at the same time when i look at that staircase i would get nauseous so it was like hmm i think i'm gonna not die. Uh, and the and what was even better is later on there was a joke video that was made years ago where it was Lethal Weapon bloopers and Mel Gibson actually did a little parody video of they got a mannequin and they dressed it up in his wardrobe from Lethal Weapon and they threw it down the stairs and then he acted like he tripped and fell down the stairs when they said that they that they were ready for him and so I didn't know about that till later but I think it's really cool that it's like yo I know those stairs. Those, you know, I work there. So <laughs> it's it's super cool. One of my one of my moments of like, oh, history, you know. So very beautiful spot. And then over here, this is just a shot of our of of the grips. Uh, some members of the grip team. Uh, if you're in the industry, grips are also known as hammers, because that's what they do. Oh, put that together. Okay, move that. You know, they're the muscle. And then electricians deal with all the electric stuff, the lighting and everything like that. And these are their grip cards and stuff. Okie dokie. So <clears throat> moving right along, uh, this is, is we're, we're kind of jumping all over the season. So again, you guys, I know that you super fans out there who know every episode and all scenes of dialogue, you'll be able to tell which episodes these are. And that'll be even more pleasurable for you as you get to watch these videos and this one specifically. I am going to do a quick little interjection here. This is going to be my asterisk, my asterisk, my little side note. Um, in this season, it, it, this was before I really knew about healthy eating and taking care of myself physically. Um, and I have had years of very ne bad set food, meaning bad for you set food. Um, and so unfortunately in this season, I got a little bit of bursitis in my hip that would kind of ebb and flow and flare up and then calm down at different points in time. So if you see shots of me sitting, or even for that matter in this episode or later episodes where you see me walking with a cane, because I was struggling with bursitis, because when you eat too much sugar and dairy, you get inflamed. And boy was I. So it just as a little side note there, it was nothing huge. It was just that little Atticus was not eating as well as he should be. And I have since learned better consumption habits so <laughs> but anyway here we go uh here's a scene me uh uh neil charlie and the gentleman who played grandpa big mike um i forget exactly what was the content of this scene uh the shots were on i think neil and charlie and it was over john who played grandpa big mike his shoulder 
You can see the two cameras going again. This was actually the area that led to, that used to lead to the Walton House, which literally got torn down right shortly after I made that Warner Brothers tour video when I was when I was 17. And so this led to that. It literally was a little no nook of greenery. Uh, that was behind our medical building, believe it or not, on the Warner Brothers Ranch lawn. And uh, that that's how we did it up. Um, greens came in and added all of the bushes and vegetation and made it look like a wild, you know, uh, desolate, air quote, desolate road. And that's where we filmed these sequences. And you can see all the crew here, excuse me, behind the cameras. You can see our boom operator, Sean, with his little microphone and uh and all the goodness therein so that was really 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 cool uh this is a beautiful shot here is the writer tim uh next to lee the director and then on their left or on our left their right is uh, our unit production manager mark and then ken our first ad behind him uh we're in between shots at this point i'm sitting there chilling with one of my with one of my uh, production assistants who would aid me. His name was Joseph. Very cool dude and uh, a fellow nerd, fellow video game nerd. So we had a lot of you know, stuff to gab about in between takes. And uh, yeah, everybody's just chilling and notes are being figured out here, given and figured out. And then here is Tim on his phone. But uh, in this picture, we see the hex station wagon parked. So it would be in evidence for the shots. And that was the actual car that we would use throughout the entirety of the show, even in the group green screen stuff, it would be this car. I think there was a point in time where there was a storyline where these doors were like crunched into by some cement pylon and they just kept the stains ever since. The hex never got it fixed. So that's a little Easter egg for all of you awesome people who remember. On this day, we had to film into the nighttime because there were night shoots for the sequences where Grandpa Big Mike just wanted to lay down in the woods and die. And the, here's here's that sequence. Again, you see the camera's all set up. It's nighttime now, actual nighttime. And they have the blackout curtains and the lighting and all that other good stuff to set the stage right, make it look like it's moonlight. Um, we were outside for this. There's Grandpa Big Mike lying on the ground and Neil and Charlie. Um carrying out the scene and then I really love this picture this is kind of a cool like hey you know, friends and family reunion type of picture you know what I mean uh, here's me uh, with the writer Tim, Charlie, John, and Neil. This was a really, really, really good picture. I think my mom took this picture. Again, she's such a legend. She is, she has such an artist's eye for photography, and uh, it's, it's so beautiful how she was able to work all these photos out. Um, I don't know if this, I think this was later enough in the year where the jackets actually felt good at night. It was pretty cold. So, we are finally I am, I am finally, we, Rachel and I, were able to show you the Heck House, and this is very exciting. Um, here is the Heck House exterior that was on Blondie Street. This is what was behind me in the Warner Brothers Ranch Studio Tour video that I made, um, that I thought I had footage for at the time, and I didn't, but here it is uh live and in person and we're doing a rehearsal here so this is before all the lighting and the camera comes out this is where it's just us talking about scenes and shots and what have you and so that's incredibly cool uh many 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 good years of memories have been made in front of this house which is very special and then behind us was a steeple that i think we only used one or two times in the entirety of the show but here's the heck mailbox you can see it says heck uh the donahue house is obviously behind them which i believe is the partridge family house i i could be wrong is partridge family or bewitched I don't remember. So if you were, if you remember, my mom is probably going to take to the comment section and be like, it's the bewitched house, you idiot. No, she's sweet. She's more, she, she has more finesse than that. But she, she'll probably drop me a reminder in the comment section of this video. But here's the heck, a heck mailbox in front of the heck house. And then again, the Donahue house and the road that goes up from the heck house. Now here's a view from the heck front door, the porch looking out on the rest of Blondie Street. On the right, you have the Griswold House, which was from Lethal Weapon, of course, and then other houses that we would use in time uh, for various reasons throughout the entirety of the show. And we have our Narnian light post, street light down here in the front yard. 
So that's super cool. And then here's a different day. Is it a different day or the same day? I forget. It might be a different day. Um, but here's us in front of the heck house again. I'm up there. Again, this is a rehearsal. Uh, I can name out. I, I won't, in the interest of time, say everybody's names. But over here on the far left is Warner Wally. And he's the executive producer of the of the show. There's multiple kinds of executive producers. But he was like budget and crew and all that good stuff guy. He He really is... Uh, the person who made the show work and run. My dear friends, unfortunately, my camera is being a little bit mad at me. It is telling me that it has low battery, which kind of stinks because when I pulled it out and turned it on uh, to check the settings before starting to record, it said it was a full battery. It lied to me. But anyways, my dear friends, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the behind the scenes of the middle. I'm going to definitely try to get out the next one to you as soon as possible. We have a ton more photos and videos of the set itself and a lot more topics that I want to discuss as well as hidden easter eggs that maybe maybe some of you know and have noticed in the show but maybe others don't know that it was formerly a known thing that uh, production was wanting to do but anyway my dear friends I hope you've enjoyed this video thus far and uh, please be sure to hit the like button on this video subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already comment down below tell me all of your thoughts feelings favorites everything and remember that the best way that you can help me with my content and especially videos like this to get them out there to other TV history or the middle fans um, is to share it on all your social media. So please do that for me. I would greatly appreciate it. My friends, I will see you in the next video. As soon as possible, I will make it. And uh, again, I hope you all have been enjoying these thus far. Keep being you. Thank you for being you. Dovid Zenya. I just want a great life. Something where I feel like I just didn't waste